Hey guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another writing video. So in today's video, pretty excited, I'm going to be sharing some secret insider knowledge with you. There are so many videos, articles, books, guides, templates, etc. out there on how to structure your book. Usually they rely around plot structure, like looking at the global structure of your book, but that can be very hard to apply if you're a discovery writer like I am, so you're writing your book without an outline. You know, like you can study the hero's journey or save the cat or whatever plot structure you like. How do you apply that if you're discovery writing? Like how am I supposed to know what the break into three in beat is in my book when I don't know what's gonna happen in my book, right? Like I'm discovery writing it. I'm going to share with you today some tips on how to structure your book as a discovery writer. So you can write a well-paced, well-structured novel without an outline. Some will say it can't be done, it can be done. It's funny because I used to think that one of the things I was the worst at as a writer was pacing and structure. As an outliner, I was so bad at those things. My outlined novels were badly paced, they were badly structured. I actually find pacing way easier as a discovery writer because I can be more in tune with the natural flow and pace of the story. These are things that I learned by discovery writing a novel. Um, when I started writing Honey Vinegar, which is a novel that I wrote, finished last year, and I started in late 2018, I was new to this writing process. It had been years since I'd discovery written. I didn't really know what I was doing. I took it one step at a time, but through the process of writing that novel, I learned so many things and had so many revelations about how to structure a book well as a discovery writer. The main thing that I want to start with is kind of my thesis point. Structuring a novel as an outliner is about understanding the larger plot structure, whether that's something simple like Freytag's Pyramid, whether it's something a bit more um, subdivided like Save the Cat or whatever, um, and then aligning your story with those beats and that shape. Structuring as a discovery writer is about understanding what each p individual little piece of your story does and fitting those pieces together in a consistent and coherent way. So you are looking at it piece by piece by piece by piece, and you can just approach the book step by step by step, little piece by little piece, but if you do that in a consistent, intentional, cohesive way, you can end up with a really well-paced first draft even. Um, obviously there will probably be places where you need to tighten the structure and places where you need to flesh things out, but you can end up with a pretty well-paced, well-structured novel just by looking at the individual pieces. So my first tip is really easy. Divide your book into parts. So I had actually never d written a book in parts before, but as I was writing Honey Vinegar, I started to realize that the book was in four main arcs. I could label these arcs based on what the core conflict was. Uh, the protagonist's name is Sybil. The first arc was Sybil in conflict with her family. The second arc was Sybil in conflict with her town. The third arc was Sybil in conflict with herself. And the fourth was Sybil in conflict with her legacy. As soon as I realized the book was in four parts, it became way more manageable. So in the actual manuscripts, the book is only split into two parts. The first two arcs are part one, the second two are part two. But in my mind, I saw it as four arcs and that made it so much easier. And it leads to my next point, And this is the technique that I used, but I call this technique nested arcs. It's really overwhelming to just see your book as one big arc. That's a lot. And Honey Vinegar, I'm not gonna say it's the most complicated novel ever, cause it's not, but there's a lot going on. Like it's more complicated than I thought it was gonna be when I started it. I was like, yeah, pretty simple novel, coming of age. And like halfway through my workshop was like, this novel's really complicated. And I was like, I know, I guess this is what I'm in for now. Cause I am repelled by anything complex. I need simple things to be simple. So it became way more complicated than I was looking for. But this is the system that helped me. Looking at it as just one arc is overwhelming. And there's so much space to go astray in terms of pacing and structure. It's just one big arc. So what you do is you break it up into as many small nested arcs as possible. So I had the one main arc and then the book was kind of in two arcs. I halved it into part one and part two. Then within each part, there were two smaller arcs. We had a big arc with two arcs within it with four arcs within it. And then within each arc, I kind of saw sets of two to three chapters as also having an arc. Each chapter itself had an arc. So I had this like really complex it almost looks like a family tree when you break it down, series of arcs, but it made it so much easier because at any given moment, rather than being like, what's the arc of my novel, which is huge. Like that's like the ocean. It's so easy to get lost and drown in. But instead it was like, I could work forward based on these smaller, but fairly consistent 
pieces. Yes, I know the arc of the whole novel, but it's kind of vague and I'm kind of lost. But I also know the arc of this part of the book, right? Like I'm working up to the book's midpoint. And within that, I know that there are two mini arcs within that. And I know that each of those mini arcs is made up of smaller arcs of sets of chapters. I could work forward in littler chunks. It was obviously like I was writing a novel that worked with that type of structure. Not all novels are like this, but it is a pretty episodic novel where a lot of events happen and there's kind of like a little narrative around the little event, kind of like a short story and there's an escalating series of those little short stories. So it worked really well for the style of novel that I was writing. That was so helpful for me this nested arc system. I did a similar thing, but obviously adjusted it a little bit for my next novel, Holding a Ghost. And this is something you can just observe while it happens. Like you don't plan out the arcs necessarily in advance, but you kind of are always thinking, okay, this is what my chapter is doing. This is what this series of chapters is doing. This is what this part is doing. So in my next novel, Holding a Ghost, the book is actually in six parts because I saw six arcs rather than four. I kind of saw the book as a series of six mini arcs. And again, that makes it so much easier than just one big arc. Like it's just so easy to wander around and get lost in one big arc. But with six mini arcs, it's way easier to stay on track. The next tip that I have is one that I talked about in my video, which was on tips for discovery writers, which I'll also leave a link to. And it's just to know the main beats. Like I do think as a discovery writer, you definitely don't need to plot out your book. Well, obviously you don't need to plot out your book based on plot beats because then you would be outlining and that defeats the point. But I do think it helps to know like the inciting incident, the midpoint and the climax. Sometimes when I start writing a book, I don't know how it's going to end. But at a certain point, like whenever you're able to, it helps to identify those three things. And maybe you also want to identify like an act one break and an act two break. I don't know. It's up to you which plot beats you want. But just identifying a few main plot beats can be really helpful and then you're just like stringing them together. So if you want like a little bit of guidance and you'll know you've got like the gen generally well paced plot, right? If these things are kind of moving consistently is a good strategy to just know those main plot beats. My next tip is to study story structure. I've taught structure quite a lot over on the Reezy channel and one really consistent comment on any video on structure that I've done here or there is plotting out your book to this will just make it really formulaic. And to a certain extent that may be true. I don't think every writer needs to use Save the Cat. I don't think every writer needs to use like whatever structure they like, uh, but you can use those things if they help you. I really like studying story structure because it strengthens your intuitive understanding of story structure. For me, the story structure that I found makes the most sense is Save the Cat or 15 Beat or Blake Snyder's Beat Sheet. I don't know, it's known as a lot of things. That one just, it makes sense to me. But you can study whichever ones you like. Even studying multiple ones can help. I've never plotted out a book or even a short story or anything based on a plot structure like this. Like never in my life have I referenced a plot structure while plotting something out or even writing something because I don't plot. I do think that studying those things and understanding how it works will really strengthen your intuitive sense of story structure. Like if you know, if you study Save the Cat and you study the mechanics of story structure, then as a discovery writer, you'll have that intuitive sense of how the pieces of a story work together. You'll be able to kind of recreate the shape of a story even without plotting out in advance and without feeling restricted by the, the necessary movement of those plot beats because you'll be able to do it a bit more intuitively. So my next tip is to use the forward motion of action and consequence or action and reaction, whatever you want to call it. Normally in a story, things will happen, the character will react to it, something will happen based on their reaction to it. You know, like a, a story is often a uh, back and forth of the character doing something and their action causing something to happen. And then they do something based on that event and then that causes something else to happen. Then they do something, then something happens, etc., etc., etc. Not always so neatly, but in general, the forward motion of a story is a character doing something, something happening. That push and pull of action and consequence is really powerful like it's like a wheel that can keep turning right and so i would keep that in mind as you're writing if you don't really know what happens next ask yourself okay am i at a consequence or am i at an action so has something just happened and now my character needs to act or has my character just acted and now something needs to happen if they just did something maybe it's time for something to happen in consequence to that if something just happened to them now it's time for them to act in response those things will keep turning over and over and over. Um, I kind of talked about this a bit in my video on writing emotion, how 
there's like an emotion, a cyclical emotional sense to a plot where something happens, the character has an emotional reaction to it. They act based on their emotional reaction, which causes the next thing to happen. And that keeps on moving. And that is a pretty consistent, natural forward sense of emotion in a story. So I would stay in tune with that. If you don't know what happens in your story, I, I find it really helps to, to look at it in those terms. And this leads to my next point, which is let your story self-diagnose itself. Um, I talked about this in my video on why I discovery write, but part of why I discovery write is because when I discovery write, the story naturally self-diagnoses. It is so hard to muscle forward a story that's not working as a discovery writer. So if you're writing and everything's going smoothly and suddenly you hit that wall and suddenly something's not working, take a step back and look at the basic building blocks of story. Conflict, stakes, goals, tension, motivation, and try to find the root of that problem because if the story is not progressing, it's probably because something isn't working. One of those things that fuels a story isn't there. Pretty much every single time my story got stuck, it's because the story itself was missing a piece or something was misaligned. Once I fixed that thing and actually like fixed that within the story, it started moving again. If all the pieces are in line, the plot will fall like dominoes, in my experience. Um, and that's outside of your natural emotional up and down. Like sometimes you have a, a low period of writing because you're, you're not in it in terms of headspace. But let's just say you're writing with like a consistent sense of motivation, um, which no, no one ever will really. But let's just say you are. <laughs> if all the pieces that make a story work are in place, the story will kind of feel like it's writing itself. It'll fall like dominoes. And this will usually be easiest near the beginning and then get hardest through the middle and then get a bit easier again near the end. So listen to that. If the story's not working, it is telling you something and you want to listen to that and stop and figure that out. I would highly recommend using character choice to move the story forward. A very common criticism of, of books is Everything happened to the main character, but they weren't active enough. Usually an active character, a character who has goals and is acting based on what they want, is an interesting protagonist to read, even if their motivation is a maybe unrelatable. So that is the fuel of your story. If you feel like you don't know what happens next, it may come back to character choice, which leads to my next point, which is know what a chapter is to you. I think one of the best ways to keep a consistent pace is to understand what a chapter is. There is no set thing that a chapter is, but you do want to know what a chapter is in your book. In my two novels that I've written over the past couple years, chapters do very different things in these different novels. So in Honey Vinegar, the chapters are quite long, 3,000 to 6,000 words, usually around 4,000 words. They basically encompass a, an event. Whereas in my other novel, Holding a Ghost, the chapters are shorter, they're more like vignettes and the chapters end when the form of the book needs to change because the form changes throughout the chapters in that book. So that's what those chap what chapters mean. They mean very different things, but I'm gonna use Honey Vinegar as the example because it's way more traditionally structured. Holding a Ghost is not traditionally structured really and there isn't really much of a plot. Honey Vinegar has more of a traditional plot development, so it's um, probably a better example to talk about how I structured that book. So in that book, I basically saw each chapter as having the following components. There is an event that happens. I kind of wanted a, an event, something to happen in every single chapter. My character makes a choice. Those things might be, they're usually related. Sometimes they're the same, you know, but they should be related to each other. There's the tie-in to the next chapter. So maybe the, something happens, the main character makes a choice as a result of that thing that happens, which is gonna cause a consequence that leads to the next chapter, something like that. And then there's kind of like a thematic arc that um, ties the story, ties the chapter together and is related to the chapter title. Because I had a consistent formula for my chapters, I think it created pretty even pacing. Pacing will be thrown off if there's too much space between events or there's not enough space between events. But what I was doing by having every chapter essentially having the same core building blocks was making sure that the plot moved forward in a really steady manner, which was what I wanted. I wanted a pretty steady sense of pacing. Although it does of course move a little bit faster at the most energetic moments, like near the, near the midpoint and near the end of the book. So because I was sure that there was like a thing that happens in every chapter and my main character makes a choice in every chapter, I think that helped create really even pacing because there was always a consistent sense of things happening in the story and there was always a consistent sense of my main character being active. 
I think most of the time a reader will feel the plot progressing when the main character is active more so than just when things are happening. If things happen to the main character but the main character doesn't act, we don't feel much progression because the plot is moving but the character is not moving. It was important for me to make sure that my plot was moving and my character was moving along with it by making sure that both those things happened in every single chapter. So know what a chapter is to you. It may be different than it was to me in that book. That's just what a chapter was for me in that book based on how I wanted that story to be structured. But know what your chapters do and do that consistently. Like have a consistent style of chapter. Every chapter doesn't always need to be the same length. Like you can have longer or shorter chapters, but know what a chap what the unit of a chapter means in the context of your book, because that's a very vague word chapter. A chapter is just a section of a story, but know what it means in the context of your story and then use it consistently and fit them together in a like coherent way. And along that, I would understand your book's regular pace. This is kind of like your book's resting heart rate. How often do events happen? But understand the resting heart rate of your book and the points where maybe the heart rate rises a little bit in order to escalate like the tension and the excitement of the story. And finally, I wanted to talk about a writing tip that I discussed in my video on character relationships, which has been a huge game changer. Like it was a lightning bulb moment for me. So I'm gonna repeat it here because it also applies to plot, but I did talk about it in that video. And it's to never repeat the purpose of a scene. So let's say you have a scene and the purpose of the scene is to establish the main character's motivation. Something happens at the beginning and then this scene is the thing that makes the main character realize what their motivation is. Do that in that scene and then in the next scene move on to the next thing. In the next scene the main character shouldn't once again be figuring out their motivation and then, the, and then in the next scene they're still figuring out their motivation. Do something with every scene and never do it again. One thing that I used to do a lot was really underestimate the power of a scene. You know when you read something and you feel like the story spends so much time circling the same information? Like, you know sometimes you read a book and you're like, I just read a hundred pages, but nothing has progressed. That's usually because the story is spending too much time circling the same information and repeating the same information and the same purpose to its scenes rather than progressing us to new information with every single scene. So to kind of wrap this up, I think my, my TLDR about structuring a book without an outline is to understand the role that the smaller pieces play in constructing your larger plot and use them with intention. So as you're moving from little piece to little piece, make sure that they're causally connected. So A is causing B, B is causing C, um, and p be mindful of those connections because the places where my novel needed revision was the places where the causal connection was misaligned and I wasn't thinking carefully enough. And then use those pieces in a coherent and consistent way. That way you'll be able to create a consistent sense of pacing and you'll also be able to control the pacing. If you want the pacing to quicken, you want to quicken, you know, the resting heart rate of your story. You can do that because you understand how to manipulate and place those pieces because you know what every little piece of your story does. So I think that's my main TLDR. Break it down into as many like sub arcs as you can. And so you always have like a clear signpost to work towards. Like you're always working towards the end of the next chapter, which is doing something specific. The end of the next mini arc, which is doing something specific. The end of the next part, which is also doing something specific. I think for me that helps make everything work together cohesively like clockwork. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing when it all works together. Obviously in a first draft, some things are gonna be misaligned. Some places the pacing is gonna be messy. It's okay, this, this won't be perfect on the first draft. It won't be perfect on the first draft, probably even if you outline it. You will probably have to go cut scenes and add scenes and fix causal relationships. But I think being mindful of these things on the first draft is really, really helpful for creating a well-structured, well-paced novel without an outline. Yes, it is possible. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video. Bye.